Hi, my name is Robbie McCormick, and last Monday the 26th, I attended a public lecture by Dr. Michael F. Schatz. The lecture was in the Colic and was on the subject of forecasting turbulence. First of all, I'd like to apologize for any background music that might be distracting, but that's just my roommate next door. Prior to coming to the lecture, I known very... To be honest, I know nothing about forecasting turbulence, or really turbulence itself. I had heard the term used in situations such as why a clean ride was bumpy, but never in terms of fluid dynamics. However, Dr. Schatz was able to break down the idea into more palatable concepts and examples, as well as walk us through a short history of the study of fluid dynamics and his own contributions to the field. One of the earlier people to study turbulence was Leonardo da Vinci himself. Da Vinci would go down to a storm drain and draw by hand how he viewed the water changing from a steady flow, a steady stream, as it crashed on the ground and became swirls and eddies, and how these swirls were tougher to predict. Another famous scientist who studied fluid dynamics was Werner Heisenberg. Heisenberg is most famous for his contributions to quantum mechanics, however, while gaining his PhD, he was convinced by his mentor and teacher Summerfield to write a paper on how flows become turbulent, which is actually how he earned his PhD. This paper relates to a quote by Eberhard Hopf, which reads, Flow follows a regular solution for a while, then another one, then switches to another one, and that's turbulence. This is the basic idea of turbulence, how a steady stream of fluid, a steady flow of any fluid, air or water or any liquid, can change from being regular and easy to predict to chaotic over time and change to swirls and curls which follow patterns that are irregular and hard to model and predict. However, in recent years, scientists have made breakthroughs within this chaos and have identified repeating patterns within the swirls and curls re referred to as exact coherent structures. One of the scientists who contributed to these breakthroughs is Dr. Schatz himself. While at Georgia Tech, Dr. Schatz and a colleague have been able to model turbulence using these exact coherent structures. They are able to identify slow moving patterns in the turbulence and basically take a mathematical screenshot of the pattern. They are able to break this down and input it into a math mathematical model. And the ma model is then able to predict where the pattern will reappear and how the turbulence will progress. Within this computer model, they use the Navier-Stokes equation. Dr. Schatz compared the Navier-Stokes equation to Newton's second law, F equals MA. The full formula is right here. It's a much more complicated version due in large part to the nonlinearity of turbulence. Unlike other things, turbulence does not follow the laws of superposition. You can't add up the patterns or track it in linear ways, which causes it to be much harder to prove. As such, the Navier-Stokes equation is one of the seven Millennium Prize problems. I was intrigued by the idea of the Millennium Prize problems and decided to research more about them. The Millennium Prize problems were instituted by the Clay Mathematics Institute in 2003, and originally there were seven problems. As of today, only one of them has ever been solved. These, these problems include such famous problems as P versus MP and the Navier-Stokes equation. Anyone who solves these problems is granted a prize of over a million dollars. However, Navier-Stokes has proved difficult to prove in large part because of the irregularity of turbulence. However, with the breakthroughs by Dr. Schatz, currently they, are only testing, they have only tested it on small regions of turbulence which are, uh, which are easier to predict for the computer model. However, in the future, these models will be able to predict weather patterns and potentially predict hurricanes and other natural phenomena. Thank you.